Tom Nook's getaway package has been in our lives for nearly three months now, and I'm never leaving. Animal Crossing New Horizons has literally changed my life, and I know it has occupied so many hours for all of you, and it's been so fun, but what are the 10 most fun things to do in Animal Crossing right now, and what can you guys go do in case you're running a little bit short on things to keep accomplishing in the game while we wait for the next big update? I think it's right around the corner. I think it might have actually been this week, but because of the world events and things that are going on, Nintendo, rightfully so, kind of sat out from making any announcements. But hopefully, Brewster and the rest of the big stuff will be soon. In the meantime, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to smash that like button if you're excited for more Animal Crossing updates and are having fun with this game. Let me know in the comments down below your most fun favorite thing to do in the game right now. I'm running through my top 10 list. Hello, subscribers. Hope you're all doing amazing. Members, thank you for making this channel a dream. If you guys haven't subscribed, make sure to do that. Everybody here is so fantastic. We've got a phenomenal group of members if you want to join up. Some great perks and an awesome Discord where everybody's just... So darn kind. It literally warms my heart. Like I'm sweating in this new sweatshirt. Anyways, let's roll straight into the list, guys and girls. Top 10 most fun things to do in Animal Crossing has to start off with number one, visiting amazing five-star islands. Oh, the inspiration, the awe, the majesty and the true miracles that people have made on their islands. There are so many amazing ones. And following the storyline from day one to now the third month has been Remarkable. I mean, remember when every awesome island was an Asian Zen garden inspired land? And then we moved into cities and then natural locations. And now people are grabbing items from all over and crafting hybrid islands and some of the most creative, awesome designs I've ever seen. You always find something that makes you go, wow, I wish I could do that. Or, oh my gosh, I actually have to do that. And I think going around and seeing the variety and the talent on display in this game is one of the most fun things you can possibly do. And I don't think it'll ever get old. There'll always be new items, new ideas, new designs, and new trends. And exploring them with you guys, checking out your islands, checking out all the awesome ones I hear about and get told about, it's so much fun. Number two is talking to Sahara. She may not be my favorite NPC, but I love the game that we've got going on where I go and grab a rug or a wallpaper and then hope it's something amazing. I mean, animated wallpapers really do make your house sing. I can hear it from the walls. Sometimes I also hear snooty in the walls and that makes me terrified, but okay, it's probably safe. It's probably safe. Sahara is not safe for me. I want to always get a big rug and see what it is. I want to always get a new wallpaper and then run to my house. I think that is one of the most fun things when you get an item that you're unsure of, right? Because if you get a couch or if you get a table, you kind of know, oh, it's, a, it's an ironwood table. I kind of know what that's going to look like. But with the wallpapers, there is this mystique. There is this sort of randomness to it. If you don't know what it is specifically, you get the wallpaper or the rug and you're like, oh my gosh, this could be the one. This could be the one that changes my house for good. And that whole cycle of going to Sahara, seeing what she has, testing it out, I love it, and, and I hope they continue to flood her marketplace with more and more tapestries, more and more floors, more and more rugs. It's, it's just really great fun. Number three is collecting those limited item sets. And even if the items aren't my personal aesthetic, the idea of racking up the complete list of whatever crazy limited festival is going on, cherry blossoms or summer shells, the mush stuff eventually in the fall, it is a journey, a challenge, and it's so satisfying. I love mixing up my island. I love mixing up my house. And just like with Sahara and the wallpapers and the floors, you get something that once it fits, ooh, it really just changes the entire feel of the room. I think these sets also help contribute to your stylistic design themes. And they help even with your island and setting new trends. Like once the cherry blossom stuff comes around, you start to see islands incorporating. So it's this beautiful blend of not only hunting for the items, which is kind of a fun thing to do in just about any game, collecting them, working together with friends or fellow players to trade DIYs or find the resources, logging in every day because you want to make sure you get enough of the resource to craft the limited items, and then just waiting for those limited items to come around. It helps change your routine. It helps change the game. And eventually it helps change your and other players' islands. And I think that whole system is great. There's so many great gameplay loops in Animal Crossing. And this is one of my favorites. I need the Summer Shell set. I need the Wedding set. I'm going to need the Winter Wonderland sets and whatever other sets Nintendo decides to bring. But let me tell you, Nintendo, if you bring a Nintendo item theme set, I will literally go gaga. And thank you so deeply from the bottom of my heart. I will give you all my bells. Take them. Give me that Nintendo theme items. We need it. Everybody wants it so bad. And that is going to make the limited item set game 
skyrocket. Once they give us Splatoon themed, Zelda themed, Mario themed, it's gonna happen one day and, and I can't wait for us to be there together. Number four is actually Rover's Maze and other games. Rover's Maze was such a great idea. Mayday may have been a very limited event with one ticket and one trial at this cool obstacle course escape room maze hybrid, but it was such an ingenious idea and it helped inspire and wake people up to all these other awesome games that exist in the world of Animal Crossing. Now, I think fans have done a far better job of creating deeper experiences because some of the races for Raymond I have participated in have blown my mind. Places like Crunchy Island are changing the game by redefining what an island is used for. Not just a habitat and a home for your villagers and friends, but a place to challenge, to explore, to get lost, to get frustrated, to have contests and hold competition. It is so much fun to see what people are designing. I've seen deal or no deal out there, scavenger hunts, races, mazes, obstacle courses, escape rooms, trivia challenges. There's so much ingenuity and enthusiasm behind these ideas and I love participating because so many of them are so good. Fans are spending hundreds of hours redefining what an Animal Crossing Island can be and I'm here for it. I hope Nintendo borrows some inspiration from its players and crafts their own competitions. I hope they bring Cap in and can maybe create some more mini games that allow us to experiment even further but for right now I will never forget my journeys through the golden goofy Goodness gracious, I'm lost panels of those Crunchy Island Race for Raymonds. It's one of the best things I've done in Animal Crossing, and I'll always be a sucker for super cool mix-ups in making this game something that it maybe wasn't supposed to be, but has all the potential to absolutely deliver. Number five is grabbing and downloading those custom outfits. Pro designs are where it's at. Now, Nintendo, you need to open up the list so that we can have many more, but I love wearing custom hats and custom shirts that represent my favorite characters. I mean, pro designs are great for other things as well and decorating and designing your island, but it's so much fun to wear a Banjo-Kazooie cap, to throw on a Team Rocket shirt, to wear Switch Force merch in the game. And we're seeing companies and designers, sports teams and celebrities take advantage of this system to help rep your favorite things, and that's so freaking cool. There's some great custom designs that evoke different eras or different fashion trends, which is fun as well. But I forever will love wearing King K. Rule on my head, throwing on a Splatoon shirt, rocking the Bowser cap, and wearing the Switch Force hoodie. It's such a fun process, albeit a bit of a slow one. I used to love the Able Sisters for their fitting room and their fashion sense, but now that I've acquired so many outfits, which is fun in its own right, don't get me wrong, I love having the eclectic clothing options. It's the pro designs that really change it up. And I love going online and searching, you know what I'd love to wear today? Something that represents Waluigi. I bet I'll find it. And then you get to wear it and realize it in the game, and it defines your character. Your villager now reflects your loves, your interests, your passions, your spunk, or maybe your simplicity. It's a great system. I hope they increase the list, and I cannot wait to see people take this pro design thing further. Number six is about hopes and dreams. It's about imagining the future of Animal Crossing. And honestly, I spend a good chunk of my time playing the game wondering what is coming next. I mean, we have all these ideas, all these data mines, all these leaks, all these things from games past that we hope are included. But it's honestly so much freaking fun to sit there and want Brewster so bad, to hope he comes, to imagine himself his own shop, be integrated in the museum, to think about how diving will work and cooking and harvesting, to wonder if Cap'n will ever make it, to hope that the cop dogs come to town, to think about will they ever expand the island or is this the space we get? And in what ways will these changes, these updates affect our progress and our play. I think it's so much fun in this game specifically to really think about what's coming next. Oftentimes, you should just enjoy what's there and not really wish and plan ahead, but because this game is all about planning, because this game is all about plotting quite literally your place, your space, I think it's totally worthwhile to get excited and dream. Plus, given that it's Nintendo and there's so much obsession over investigating the code, we know certain things are coming, and that adds so much oomph because it's not just a pie-in-the-sky idea of a pigeon dropping by. We know Brewster are about to descend. It's just a matter of when. And that chase, that hunt, that wait is really freaking cool. What's better than hoping, wishing, and dreaming? Actually exploring new updates. And that's number seven. Checking out the new stuff that they bring. Update days are so freaking hot. They're so fun. It's such a great time to see your game needs an update. Do you want to download? And you're like, oh my gosh, I've never clicked the button quicker. And that wait is so tantalizing to see if they've just fixed some glitch or duplication issue or if they've just patched quality of life or 
if they're actually going to bring a new NPC, a new event. I mean, for as much as people hated Bunny Day, wasn't it a world of fun to just see how that event went, how they how they updated it, how it stunk, how it was great, bringing Red and Leaf into the fray, getting the rover maze we talked about before. There are duds like International Museum Day, but we found a way to have fun even with simple updates like the June wedding season one. Bringing in Cyrus and Reese was actually a super smart idea and opened the AC world to a whole lot more creativity in a totally different way that I never predicted. I mean, they made Harvey's Island worthwhile. Are you kidding me? That's a crazy update in my books. And for every big update, there is a small one, but we need those small ones to keep this game strong, to keep the community tightly knit, and to make sure that the economy and things of the sort don't get out of hand. So any update is a good update by my opinion. And I really feel like we're going to get a big one soon. So I am extra excited to have the fun feelings of number seven once again in the near future. Number eight is all about those squirmy, wormy little shadows in the sea, rivers, and ponds. I love fishing. I think of all the tiny gameplay mechanics, this is probably my favorite. The intense weight and wonder of what you're going to catch. Paying attention to the sounds and the vibration missing something amazing and finally grabbing a big catch it's so satisfying it's so great to see especially as the seasons turn and right now fishing is more fun than ever because shark season is here in the northern hemisphere i know i know you southern hemisphere players have had this for a while and i'm sure you know how cool it is to see the little tiny fins pop up but i'm experiencing it for the first time and it's so fun even before shark season though fishing is the most intriguing dice roll in the game I think a lot of the fish are really fun and interesting because they do include things like frogs and that doesn't really seem like it's something you should fish for. They include trash, they include eggs. There's a lot of opportunity to participate. The fishing tournaments are fun and I just frankly like using the bait and tackle more than I like using the net with bugs. So I hope that they continue to add things to the fishing experience. I mean, we know that diving is going to arrive at some point, maybe some sort of seaweed and a different seafood type cooking. I like this thing a lot. And it hasn't gotten old, which is weird because it's a very repetitive mechanic that does potentially have some frustration, but lining it up, it's a little bit serene. There is a certain majesty and peacefulness to the fishing process, and that's why still, three months in, it's one of my favorite, most fun things to do in ACNH. Number nine could go either way. Honestly, it could be on the most frustrating list or the most fun list, and that is terraforming. But at the end of the day, terraforming has totally changed the game and brought a whole new world to Animal Crossing. Being able to elevate your island, being able to create multiple levels, being able to make cliffs and waterfalls. It's so much fun. And as annoying as the system is, and I do wish that they would add some quality of life to make it easier to aim, shovel, and strike, there's a real, real good feeling when you hear your character shoveling away, when you get to see the cliffs appear out of nowhere, when you see them crumble the dust, and when the water starts to flow, the restrictions are high. The time commitment is heavy but I think it's so satisfying. And those islands that really do it well, that utilize multiple different levels are so good. And when you see excellent terraforming, you're just like, wow, that took a lot of time. And maybe one day I'll achieve similar. It is a tall task, but it's one of the ways that you're able to input the most amount of your own ingenuity into your island and the different ways people have crafted their entryways or their secret beaches or their villages. It's so cool. And I think the little hat that you get to wear and the little island designer app, while maybe cumbersome and while definitely in need of some sort of on-screen indicator, it's one of the best, most enjoyable additions that they made in this iteration. Our final most fun thing is number 10, and this one gets a little personal, but it's drawing on the bulletin board, man. I love drawing on the bulletin board. I know, I know this is simple, but my drawings have been wild, ridiculous, and so much fun. I love using the joysticks to try your best to craft something that comes across as 20% good enough. I mean, right, like everything I draw is really sucky, but in the same time, there's a charm to drawing your favorite AC characters with the limited color palette and the really difficult obtuse controls of joysticks for markers. I just find it a side joy. One I did not expect to have, one I did not expect to fall in love with, but every time I visit an island, now I'm leaving a picture. Cute notes are one thing, letters from your mom are another, birthday greetings are okay, but it's the drawings and then the cornucopia of color that you can have if you have a bunch of friends come over, a bunch of players come over and see what they draw. Sure, you're going to have some goofy stuff, some throwaway stuff. But if you see what I've seen, it's really fun to experience awesome artwork on these bulletin boards and try your hardest to make something out of nothing, which is kind of the whole point of Animal Crossing, isn't it? Creating something beautiful with limited tools and having fun with your friends, sharing it with the community. 
This game has changed me and taught me so much. And it's fun with an incredible community, I think, that rises above all else. Thank you so much to everybody here for making this community awesome for me, for making it welcoming, even when I make mistakes, even when I don't know something right off the bat, even when I get a little goofy about Snooty or Brewster. I love you guys so much. Switch Strong has become a phenomenal Discord. I hope you guys are enjoying that community. If you haven't already, go check it out. It's full of such kind, fun, ready to trade and help people. You can play Animal Crossing. You can hang out with me, discuss other games too. We got a whole lot of channels and forums over there. It's just remarkable. Animal Crossing came at the perfect right time, and it's been so much fun through the stress and struggle that we've experienced over the last couple of months. And I hope this list reminds you that this game is awesome. And it's still awesome in spite of needing maybe a content push or two. But I think we'll get it soon. I'll have you guys covered. If you don't have your notification bell turned on, definitely ring it. So I can ring you as soon as they do drop Brewster Diving or whatever else they've got planned. I have you covered and I appreciate and love you guys so much. Big thanks to subscribers and members. You guys are the very best. Until next time, I love you all. Thanks for being here. Stay safe and stay healthy and stay smart out there. Until next time, guys and girls. Switch Force, out.